God has spoken to me many times about my assignment. Of course, you know, in Albania, it's where he called me to the nations. That's kind of crazy, me to the nations. I never desired to go anywhere. <laughs> As you heard this morning, right? It's to the nations. In 2018, God spoke to me to summon the ships. And you heard about that as well throughout time, if you're a partner and, and you guys are. Some of the ships send small groups out across the country. Why? And across the nation. Why? Because I want you to take this message to people that have never heard this and take it into their homes, have them invite their friends, let them see pictures like Amy's healing of a 13 pound tumor. Let them see the kingdom operate. Let them see stories like this. Tell them stories and then tell them how, them, how it happened and how they can duplicate it, how the kingdom operates. And that has been my passion. In 2019, surprisingly to me at that time, an angel showed up in my bedroom in the morning and said, you have a mission. I thought it was rather strange that God would send an angel to tell me I have a mission when I already knew I had a mission. He was reminding me, <clears throat> excuse me, you have a mission. It needs to be your focus. He reminded me. Then some other times, um, March, of last year, the uniform shows up. You know the story, we, we come from that, how that uh, naval uniform showed up. Going back to Isaiah 54, Isaiah prophesying, verse number one. Sing, barren woman, you have never born a child. Burst into song and shout for joy. You who are never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman or the barren woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. What does this mean? This scripture is so powerful to you. Let's dive into it. We've, we've covered it at church here, but you need to catch what this is saying. How could someone never having labor have all these kids, right? How, let's just translate it over to a, a different topic. How could you, not knowing how to prosper, all of a sudden be successful, extremely prosperous? You can put anything in that barren topic, in that empty vessel of being barren. You can put anything in there. Anything you don't have and think's impossible, you can put in here right now. All right? So it's talking about children. Now, Paul interprets this scripture for us over in Galatians chapter 4. And he says this, writing to the Jewish believers there, verse 21, tell me you who want to be under the law, are you not aware of what the law says? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by the slave woman and the other by the free woman. His son by the slave woman was born in what kind of way? The ordinary nine months, the normal, as fast as you can run in the flesh way. But his son by the free woman was born as a result of a promise. These things are uh, taken figuratively. The women represent what? Okay, that's what Paul's interpreting for us. It, this is interpretation of these, it's two covenants, two covenants, the Old Testament covenant and this new covenant. One covenant is from Mount Sinai. That's where the 10 commandments were given. The law was given. And that is law, that's slavery. No one can, no one can match that. No one can earn that, right? Now, uh, this is Hagar. Hagar was uh, Abraham's attempt in the flesh to fulfill the promise of God. We could preach on that for a while. <laughs> Trying to fulfill the promise of God by your own doing, your own flesh. Now, how many found that that's not gonna work? Yeah, yes, amen. You've gotta be warp speed, okay? Now, Hagar stands from Mount Sinai, of course. She was in slavery with her children, but Jerusalem that is above is free and she's our mother. Now, the chapter above this, Isaiah 53, as you know, is a prophetic chapter, the whole chapter about Jesus coming into the earth realm. It begins with, surely he took up our pain, that's verse four, and bore our suffering, yet we consider him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Who is he talking about? Jesus. Verse number 12, it ends the chapter with, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The entire chapter is about Jesus. Would you agree? The very next verse then is sing barren woman. 
you have never borne a child, burst into song and shout for joy, you who are never in labor. What is Isaiah prophesying? He is prophesying the new birth, the church, you. Abraham, you're going to have so many kids, not the natural way, the supernatural way. No, no labor, no natural birth. You're going to have more kids <laughs> than the natural way. It was a prophetic word about the church being born again. Two covenants. Verse 28. Now you brothers and sisters like Isaac are children of promise. At that time, the son born according to the flesh persecuted the son born by the what? Power of the warp speed. <laughs> the power of the spirit. It was impossible for Sarah to have kids. It was impossible. I mean, it was impossible for her to have kids, Right? It was, or was it? What do you call impossible? Well, it's impossible that I can. It's impossible that I could. I don't know how. Stop it. Jesus said all things are possible to those that believe. And in this assignment, in this season, in this day and hour, you're going to have to know how to tap into that supernatural power and walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. But what does the scripture say? Get rid of the slave woman and her son for the slave woman's son will never share in the inheritance with the free woman's son. You cannot earn it. You cannot do enough yourself to make it happen. You cannot do it in the flesh. The Bible says, get rid of any theology in your mind that says you earn it by your own works. An inheritance is received. You do not earn anything with it. You simply say yes. Is that right? Paul was trying to tell this Jewish church, which is bound up with legality and law, all their existence, throw that theology in the trash. Jesus has now made you a son and a daughter of the house. You qualify for the inheritance. You qualify to carry the anointing. You qualify to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, to have God himself lead you and do things so beyond your understanding that it's by the power of the Spirit and not of yourself. You must get comfortable in tapping into supernatural strategies and hearing God in this day and hour. You have to. Have to. Dump the works mentality. I told our church when I taught this that if you feel guilty about doing this or not doing this, forget it. There's now no condemnation in Christ Jesus. Well, I, I don't, you know, I miss church. You feel guilty not going to church. Why do you feel guilty not coming to church? You are the church. Yes, you should come to church. But the fact you feel guilty about it tells me you're still bound to the law. You know, if you, if you make a mistake, what do you try to do? You try to, how can I make that? I read my Bible 30 hours this week. Okay, I feel righteous now. I feel confident before the Lord. Right? You're still under law. You can't receive your inheritance because you are condemning yourself, judging yourself. You can't stand before God with, with the confidence and receive that supernatural power that's going to get it done without you giving birth to it in the flesh, carrying it out in the flesh. Right? Examine your thoughts. How can I, I made a mistake. How do I, you know, right? Religions taught you to judge yourself according to works. You have to dump it. You have to it, dump that stuff. You have been made righteous. You are holy. He calls you holy. I, I went to uh, Luke chapter 15 when I taught the church of the prodigal son. When he came back to the father, the father himself carried the robe of righteousness, the family robe, and covered him when he was coming into the house. And I told my church, I said this, he put it on you, don't take it off. If he calls you righteous, you are righteous. He saw you coming covered with that filth, that pigsty. He saw you coming unclean. And the father made himself unclean to come out and kiss you and hug you and to chose to become unclean for your sake and cover you and called you son again or a daughter. That was his choice. Wasn't your choice? I said, don't take it off and don't look under it. 
The enemy likes to keep reminding of you who you were. Keep, oh, that's, yeah, that's nasty. Oh, no, you have to keep your eyes. God calls you righteous. You are without blemish. You are without fault. You are righteous before him because of what he did, which qualifies you to work in the spirit, to tap into the spirit. This is vital to your spiritual life. You have to understand this. You have to understand this. As I said to the church, this concept of Christians aren't perfect, but just forgiven is total trash. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter five, that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away, not forgiven away. It doesn't exist. As far as from the east is to the west, it does not exist. You're perfect in his sight. You've been recreated as a new person. You're not forgiven. You're made new. You have to know who you are. You have to, the devil's going to try to condemn you, try to buy into the lie, trying to tell you you're not righteous, you have no authority. He's going to try to take all of that from you, but you have to know your ground. You have to know in this hour, in this day, in a battle, you have to know who holds the authority. You have to know that. It can be life and death. And certainly victory or defeat, that's for sure. You're not bound by the ordinary way. And this, this still, we have to get our thinking changed. You're not some lowly little creature. God is a, kind of just like, well, okay, you know, and he just kind of brings you along. But no, you need to realize you're his son and daughter of the house. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That means authority. You have exactly the same authority Jesus did when he walked the earth. Exactly. That Bible says you're a co-heir with Christ. Everything he has, you have. Everything, the whole kingdom, you have it right now. You have it. But so few people know that. They don't understand that. They spend their life begging for something they already have. And they come before the Father begging. Their prayer life is begging. They have no concept of who they are, their authority, or the weapons God has given them to take the enemy out. They don't understand that. <laughs> 